I know. Hello. How are you doing? How are Good you? Good to see you again. Good to see you, Martin. Yeah, same here. So uh, without further ado, uh, since this is the last talk of the track one, the closing with a bang, uh, take it away. All right, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I've really been looking forward to, uh, to presenting for everybody. Um, I'm gonna speak today about building uh, powerful reactive web apps with uh, Crystal and Svelte. Um, I'm going to definitely talk about Crystal because we love Crystal, but I'm also going to introduce everybody to Svelte, which is a front end framework for building reactive web apps. Uh, let me give a very brief introduction on me. Um, my day job is I'm a head of product at a small startup called Connect the Dots. Uh, I studied business and psychology in university. I was not a CS major. Um, I actually was a fairly late in life uh, computer science uh, uh, programming uh, adopter. Um, I'm self-taught uh, other than, you know, standard nerdery in which we, you know, we all learn when we're kids. Um, I started for real with Ruby and Rails in 2012 at the ripe old age of 34. Uh, so, you know, this is a late in life kind of thing for me, and I'm, I'm very happy to be able to share some of my learnings with you. Uh, I'm also a semi-obsessive coin collector. Uh, so if anyone out there is into collecting coins, uh, we can talk about it. That's one of my hobbies, and I like to share some of the, the joy and images uh, in my talk. So first, let me tell you about uh, what my motivation is for talking to everybody. Uh, you know, I originally had said that it was totally selfish because I want to learn and my, my, my interest in this is not only to teach you guys something, but actually to level up in my own programming. But what I realized is that it's actually not a selfish motivation because I want other people to have a chance to level up as well. Um, it's, it's really important to me, you know, learning and, and being able to teach and learn has been hugely, hugely exciting and motivating for me. So I'm going to talk a little bit about an open source framework that I've put together. I really want to encourage other folks out there to ask questions, participate, um, amateur, dumb, simple, early questions. You know, I, I don't know the answers to a lot of them. I'm, I'm, here to learn myself and I want to help others learn. And I hope I can provide some motivation to show you that even if you're not a hardcore computer science major, you can learn about uh, programming and teach yourself and, and build web apps. So the reason that I'm doing this is that I, you know, I, I enjoy building web applications. I think they're super fun. Uh, I like building my own tools. I think there's something incredibly empowering about building your own tools and applications and being able to share them, maybe with nobody, maybe with just yourself, but maybe actually share them with the world. Um, Svelte is a tool in addition to discovering Crystal felt as a framework for building really powerful front end stuff. And until Crystal builds a web assembly target, which by the way, I hope is in the future, that would be amazing to be able to write Crystal uh, that compiles to web assembly and really get it in the front end. We are stuck with JavaScript. Um, Svelte is a reactive front end framework like Angular, React, or Vue, you may have heard of. Uh, it's, it's relatively new, a relative newcomer. I think it's incredibly powerful. Uh, the biggest difference, it, it's very similar in that it lets you build really fun, exciting, fast moving front end applications. The biggest uh, thing that's different is it actually much like Crystal has a compiler um, and a lot of the heavy lifting in Svelte is done at compile time, which gives it an incredible performance advantage. Uh, it is compiling from Svelte components, which I'll show you down to JavaScript. It's not going any lower level than, than that for now. Uh, we'll see what the future brings. Uh, it does support JavaScript and TypeScript. It's got some advanced buzzwordy things called server-side rendering with client-side hydration. Uh, the short version is it's really powerful and fast. Server-side rendering is the old way of doing things in which the server builds your HTML and sends it down to the client. And then client-side hydration is where you hook up your really cool client-side JavaScript and it all happens really quickly. Uh, and the most important thing is that it's component-based. Uh, Svelte lets you write these modular little components to build your front-end uh, framework uh, and it, it builds your front-end views. And I think it's really awesome. So I'm gonna jump directly into some uh, live stuff. Uh, I know that we have been warned that live coding is a, a risky endeavor. Uh, but I didn't realize it was a risky endeavor until we uh, until we started planning the conference. So uh, yeah, you know, let's let's kind of take it from here. Um, okay, uh, I assume that my screen is visible. Uh, what I have is a little framework that I've put together. Uh, I'll I'll get into how it works in a minute, but let's show you the fun stuff. Uh, this is running on a Crystal backend. Uh, there's nothing that you can see on the left here because I haven't actually written any code yet. 
Um, and it's uh, rendering these client side views, which are these Svelte components. Svelte components are awesome. They are really simple. They look like old school HTML files. You have your script, uh, you have your style, and then you can actually just write in uh, HTML code. So let's say, you know, hello, Crystal. Uh, and we do that. And one of the really wonderful things about uh, this framework that I'm using uses a bunch of glue components put together is it has real time, uh, it's called hot module reloading. So as you saw, I hit enter there and my screen on the left uh, were, uh, immediately updated. And that works not only with HTML, but that actually works with CSS as well. So we could go in and we could change our CSS here to green and you'll see that that immediately changes to green. I apologize for anyone out there who's colorblind. Trust me, that did actually change from blue to green. Um, okay, so great. We've, we've shown that we can actually write pure HTML. It gets rendered right away. Let's bring some crystal into it. Um, here I have a controller. This framework works on the Amber framework right now. Uh, it actually has been designed. It will work on Lucky. It will work on Camel. It will work on any, it'll work on pure, you know, HTTP crystal code. I happen to have built it using Amber because I really like Amber. Um, but this is a basic controller uses the pretty simple model view controller model. You know, we, we call the index. Uh, it calculates a little bit of data here. And then this is some custom stuff here that actually sends the calculation down to the client. So let's pretend that instead of calculating one plus one, we were actually doing a database call. Uh, and so this is this little framework here. It's, it sends it down to my index component and I'm gonna add in some very little simple code here that will show you exactly how this works. We're gonna do my little shake and bake here. So here's some data from the server. Uh, whoops, see, that's how it always works. Everything always breaks when you think it's gonna, when you think it's gonna work. Okay, but the good thing is that it actually comes back together really quickly. So uh, I forgot to paste in my script code. So let's make sure to paste in my little script. I have a little, uh, have a little fake script code here. And we're gonna bring in my script. So you can, you can, I'll talk a little bit about what the script does a little bit later. It's basically boilerplate. Uh, it's, we try to keep it super, super, super simple. Uh, and now we can go and show you a little bit of code. So this is data from the server. That's that one plus one code here. And we're actually just gonna do it. And we can now see that I've calculated this is coming down. Now, this is actually something that's calculated on the server in Crystal. It does do live reloading. It's not as fast when you actually change your server code because we actually have to run a recompile. So it takes a few seconds when you change your Crystal code. It does a recompile. I don't have auto refresh enabled, but if I refresh, you can see here that data from the server is now five. However, the client side stuff is immediately. So if I were to actually go and edit the JavaScript, that is a real number five that's coming down and we can edit it and say, five plus one and hit enter. And we can see that our data from the server is number six. Great. Okay. Another wonderful thing about Svelte. Svelte actually uh, lets you build these wonderful components. Uh, so I can take something as a subcomponent. We build a little mini subcomponent here that says hello from the best component in the world. And I can actually now just insert my own tag called the best component in the world. And it will automatically import that, render it into the screen right here. It's completely self-contained. So I can go into this subcomponent and I can change things in the subcomponent and that'll update on my server. It all compiles it and does it all together and updates it uh, right in browser. Uh, you can even make more complicated subcomponents. I promised you I'd have some coin nerdery stuff in here. So I have a little subcomponent here that displays images of you know some of my favorite coins. So uh, we've built this again as a completely contained component. It's got some very simple logic in which I can choose to show slightly different coins depending on a drop down. This is a beautiful 1797 half dollar. This is a very rare coin called the Stella $4. And there's the legendary 1804 $10 gold piece. Uh, sorry if I'm getting deeply nerdy, but that's the kind of stuff that I love. Um, anyway, the point is you can build your components and then assemble them in a really, really modular, nice way. Uh, there's also some interactive stuff that you can do. So I'll show you very briefly. We could add a little uh, form here uh, with an, a, a bound input. So I'm just doing a very simple that says, hello, Joe Blogs. I can actually change it to say, hello, Noah, you know, hello, conf. 
and these, you know, all sorts of things uh, in here. So uh, this is all my way of showing you that uh, it's dynamic. You can build uh, these really, really interesting and dynamic front end components. Um, and they, they hook up seamlessly uh, uh, with your crystal. So uh, the last thing that I'm going to demo is uh, to prove to you that there's actually some useful stuff. I actually built a, a small little app that I use almost every day. Um, and I eventually will release something like this. But I want to give you an example of some of the more complex things that you can do. Uh, and I just have that loading the separate window. And that should load up beautifully. And let's confirm that it actually works. And there it is. So I've built um, it's a it's a task manager that I use for myself uh, to keep track of actual bugs. And I, I, I call this uh, it's sort of like the Pomodoro method. You can create little blocks of time uh, that you want to do work in. And so, um, you know, I, I give myself a 45 minute work session and then a 15 minute break. If you update the time, it'll automatically update that 15 minute break and push it out. Uh, and then you can add tasks, you know, uh, present at conf, you know, and then relax. And then you can drag tasks between them. And then I, I give myself the ability to focus so I can, you know, click start. And this gives me a complete focus mode and gives me and says, uh, well, actually, I only give myself one minute because it's about to be 145, but a little countdown timer. And then you can complete your tasks, gives you a little check mark once you've completed your task, tells you how long your work session was. That wasn't a very long work session. I promise I do longer work sessions. Uh, and then once we're done with this conference at uh, 15 minutes, we'll change it to two o'clock, time to relax and then get back to work. So this is real. This is all built using this framework. It's the databases in the back end using Crystal. The front end is all built using Svelte. Uh, and uh, it really kind of gives you a, a demonstration that there is actually powerful stuff that you can do. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to go back to the presentation a little bit, and I'll just talk a little bit about how this actually works. Uh, despite looking, you know, sort of fancy, it's actually not very fancy at all. Um, I've built a little framework called Celestite. Celestite is a reactive UV crystal. You see what I did there. Uh, it's uh, available uh, on my website. I'll include all the links uh, afterwards. And there's a GitHub uh, project. I would love folks to take a look at the GitHub and contribute. Uh, you know, I am, like I said, I'm a business and psychology major who studied a little bit of CS. I'm sure there are ways that my code can be better. And one thing I've learned is the absolute best way to get better is to have other people critique your stuff. So please, please, please critique away. Let me just tell you a little bit about how it works. Uh, here's our browser sending requests to our server. As I mentioned, it can be HTTP, Amber, Camo, Lucky, Athena, any crystal uh, framework that you'd like to use. And then it's very simple. All it does is send out the request. It almost subcontracts out these requests to a little stack that uses three very, very basic JavaScript technologies. It uses Node, small server running Node. It uses something called uh, Snowpack, which is a build tool. Uh, in a previous version of this, I didn't actually use the build tool. I used Svelte Kit. If any one of you here are Svelte fans, you'll know what that is. Uh, Sapper previously. I actually ended up ripping that all out and putting together uh, a direct compiler on Snowpack uh, and uh, works really well. Really what that job is, is receive a request and say, give me the, the Svelte enabled uh, HTML. It does a little bit of uh, JavaScript, custom JavaScript code generation for the client, sends it back. The Crystal server then sends it back a rendered beautiful page. This is really nothing fancy, but it works, sort of. Uh, and I really, uh, it makes building web apps really easy. I, I really enjoy it. So that's basically how this little framework works. Uh, Celestite, you know, I draw the border around Celestite. It's just this little component here. Um, in the future, you know, I think there's a, many ways that we can make this more efficient. I think we can make it faster. I've looked at thinking or thought about at least, you know, integrating uh, a, a JavaScript runtime, you know, V8 or uh, through the C bindings or duct tape, which is a, a, another alternate JavaScript runtime. Honestly, it's so fast right now, I mean, we're, we're talking, you know, millisecond, one to two milliseconds to run out because you're running a local Node.js server, one to two milliseconds to go out, render Svelte is really, really quick uh, that this is a premature optimization. I, I don't think we need to integrate, you know, the round trip of the HTTP request to a locally hosted Node server. It's just not that much overhead. Nonetheless, I like to think about, you know, what I'm learning all aspects of engineering, including premature optimization. So that's one of those wonderful things. But anyway, thinking about the future. 
Uh, and that's really it, to be honest. Uh, I wanna keep this to about 20 minutes. We're just about under 20 minutes. Um, I will include a link to this presentation so folks can view it. Uh, there's some you know, links here to learn a little bit more about me, to learn about this framework, to learn about Svelte. Uh, I think it's really, really great. I hope I can encourage some folks to get involved in this. It is genuinely, and when I say this, I mean it, genuinely fun to build web apps using this. You know, you have this instant uh, REPL-like feedback when you make changes. Uh, you know, working in Crystal is a joy, as you all know. Working in Svelte uh, is as enjoyable as working with Crystal because of this component and compiled nature. Uh, and so I hope I can inspire some of you to do this and maybe we can port it to Lucky and Athena and some other uh, web frameworks and really get this going. Uh, and with that, that is all I have to say for the time being. All right, thank you so much. Uh, as always, it's a, it's a pleasure to hear you. Uh, we all already have one question lined up. Uh, Anastas asks, uh, would one have to manage Node.js process separately or would Celestite handle all of it? Because I'm guessing Node.js would have to be pre-installed, any version restrictions? Uh, that is an excellent question. Thank you. I think uh, the, the short answer is no. In theory, you should not have to manage Node. I've built this so uh, when you install Celestite, it installs uh, all of the associated process management stuff. It, uh, you do actually have to have Node installed fundamentally. Um, uh, and I think the I think I have it bound to version ten. I may have updated it. Uh, it it it's not using any particularly fancy Node features, um, and I've tried to make it as plug and play as possible. Now, do you have to manage the process? You know, I would be a liar if I said sometimes the Node process doesn't you know crash or hang, and I have to go in and kill it. But for the most part, I actually spent quite a bit of time trying to write code that automatically killed all of the children processes when you exited your Crystal app. So it works reasonably well. Uh, I will add that this new version of the framework that I've been working on that uses Snowpack and is a little bit sleeker, I have not updated in the GitHub repo. Uh, that will be done in the next day or two. So if you join, you'll see a slightly older version. Some of the syntax will change just a little bit. I've made things a few more explicit, uh, but star the repo, send me a note. Uh, if you wanna know when the latest is pushed, I'll get that pushed up there and, and get folks on it. Does anyone else have a question? I'm not seeing anything here. It, it was a fairly comprehensive run, so. Thank you, Martin. All right, so mm -hmm. it's, it's, I know it's been a long day. <laughs> People are probably tired. Uh, so uh, if no one else has any questions, you can follow up with Noah. Oh, here we come with one. Uh, Henry asked, what does the controller code look like? Yes. Um, so controller code, it will, it depends entirely on the framework uh, that you're working with. You know, Lucky, I think, has a different framework that Amber does. Um, I will very, very, very briefly uh, just show you my desktop uh, and I'll pop over there and show you quickly what a controller looks like. It's super, super simple. Um, I try to keep, you know, I, 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 one reason I, I found uh, Amber, this is before Lucky was super popular, is that uh, Amber tries to keep the controllers extremely light. So the controller here is, you know, you, it just extends application controller. You define a method uh, called index. Uh, there's a router where you would assign a particular route to index. And then the controller really is just any calculations you want to do. You assign it to a context object. I created a little, it's just a hash like called Celestite context. This is the data. And then you just call the render and that actually just calls the Celestite rendering. It's very simple. Um, I, I, I love lightweight stuff like this with minimal boilerplate. So uh, that's, that's a controller. Well, thank you, Noah. Thank you, everyone. And we'll thank see you, there. Martin. Thank you, everybody. Talk to you all soon.